Hello! Hi, Aaron. Good to see you today. Um, we're back. Very excited. It is a Saturday morning, which is so lovely. It is a beautiful Saturday morning um, where I am. It's actually snowing, or it snowed a lot last night, um, which right now is cozy and delightful. But we actually had to drive home from my, your first mainline Pokemon game. Thank you, Jesse. Um, yeah, this was mine too. This was my first mainline Pokemon game as well. That's why we're playing it on the channel, which I'm really excited about. Um, but, uh, but yeah, last night we had to go from my hometown back to where we live. And it's about like an hour and 15 minutes. Um, but it took us like a, like a hard three hours to get there, to get here last night. Um, because the snow was just absolutely vicious. Um, but now on just a beautiful sunny Saturday morning, there's snow everywhere. It is the perfect time to be playing a video game. I really feel like those are always the best vibes for me. Um, especially now I work in a school, so those Saturday mornings are still precious to me. Let's do a little team recap here um, for the uninitiated. Um, so we have our Mankey named Hanky Panky um, <laughs> with Karate Chop, Leer Low Kick, and Mega Punch. We have Wife, my wife. Um, this is a Bell Sprout, um, Sleep Powder, and Vine Whip, notably. Um, we have Keith Angel, our newly evolved Gyarados, which is very exciting. Um, taught this bad boy Bubble Beam. Give it a stab move. Um, we have Caterpoo, the Butterfree. Favorite generation is Gen 2. Yes, my favorite generation is Gen 2 also. Um, Yellow was my first, but Gold, Silver, Crystal is my favorite. Um, like, always and forever. Um, and we'll probably play a Gen 2 game on here at some point. Um... And we've got, let's see, Birdie the Pidgeotto. Still just three moves for little Birdie here. And then finally, <laughs> Biddlebug, lovingly named by the chat. Um, really is just our cutter for now. Not really planning on keeping Biddlebug on the squad. Um, but we were heading toward Rock Tunnel. Um, the dark, scary Rock Tunnel. And we have this route full of trainers to get through on our way. Um, but yes, Generation 2 is my favorite as well. I Lugia is my favorite Pokemon. If you see this screen, that's my boy Lugia. <laughs> um, and specifically when Pokemon the Movie 2000 came out, um, I was obsessed with that movie. I thought Lugia was so cool. Um, still do. Kind of has become a mascot, not just for this, but, um, on my guitar, uh, I, when it, it, I got it used, but when I first got it, hold on. I got it used and it had like a chip in the body. Um, when it got delivered to me, um, which was terrible and I hated it and I had like insurance on it, but it was like, it, I, yeah, that wouldn't help for some reason because of the, uh, whatever, just the way that it was shipped, my insurance didn't work or whatever. So it had a chip in the body and I was really upset about it, but I put this little sticker on it, if you can see. That's my boy Lugia. I think it's really cool on my silver axe here. Um, your favorite Pokemon is Typhlosion. I agree wholeheartedly with that choice. Um, Typhlosion is probably my favorite fire type. Um, uh, what do they have, a Bellsprout? Let's go ahead to Burry. Um, uh, when Legends Arceus came out, I was super, super happy to see um, Typhlosion get 
a regional form. Um, oops, sorry. And Hisui and Typhlosion, the ghost type, is probably one of my favorite Pokemon ever as well. Um, it's so freaking cool. Um, Typhlosion has really cool, like, classic cards in the card game also. Um, I know some of its, like, one of its original artworks um, is a really, really um, expensive card, Typhlosion. But, oh, you haven't played Legends? I highly, highly recommend Legends. Um... I think it's such a really, really cool departure for the series. Um, and they just get into really cool lore stuff. Oh, critical hit. That is horrific. Um, let's see here. What are, what are we doing? Let's just go ahead and Caterpoo. Yeah, I don't know how long Caterpoo is going to be on the squad. Um... But yes, Legends Arceus, I could talk about Legends Arceus for a long time. I love that game. I love, like I said, what they did with the lore. I love um, just the art style, really, and the vibe. A lot of what makes a good video game to me is vibe. Um, and Legends Arceus has that in spades, I think. Um, and a lot of the new forms that they made for that game were just awesome. Um, in fact, I kind of consider Legends Arceus to be, like, number five in my, like, perfect, uh, <laughs> perfect line of Pokemon games to, for the new player. Um, oh, Let's Go Johto would be awesome. Yes, I am also excited about the possibility of a Let's Go Johto. I think I I would love to see a new Legends game uh, before anything, um, but I would obviously welcome a Let's Go Johto. It's my it's my favorite region still, so um, that would be really cool. I just I just feel like I've heard rumors that they're gonna do it. I just feel like maybe they wouldn't, just because the reason the first one exists is that um, it's kind of like. It was kind of, what's the word? Um, just taking advantage of the fact that Pokemon Go was super popular at the time. Um, I can't think of that word, um, but it's okay. Let's see, this guy's a hiker. He's probably got rock types. We'll go in the wife. Um, yeah, and like, you know, Pokemon Go is still a big thing it's just not as much of a big thing as it was then because that it really exploded um because i remember i will always remember going out um in la when we lived there one night and everyone so many people were out playing pokemon go and this was at like this was like on a friday night going out to bars and stuff in downtown la um, but, uh, yeah, it was huge. So I don't know if they'll do an, a Let's Go Johto, just because that's kind of cooled off a little bit. But, oh, oh, black and white one plus two might be Gen 10. Um, like, do you mean they'll remake black and white one and two? Um, because I wouldn't hate that either. Black and white are, yes, black and white are probably my least favorite games. I remember when those came out, um, it, I just didn't really like the designs, and it was around, like, my end of high school, so I was kind of pretending like I was gonna grow out of it, um, or whatever, of the franchise. Um, but, yeah, I just, there's just something about Black and White 2, ah, we don't need Suns 4, um, there's just something about Black and White 2, or Black and White and Black and White 2, that I don't love. Oh, nice! 
My life's evolving. Hooray! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Amazing. Um, so, Bell Sprout has evolved into Weepin' Bell, which is great. There is one more evolution to go for Weepin' Bell. Uh, we will get it soon enough. Um, and yes, I really want we oh, I really want Weepin' Bell to continue to be on the squad. Um, Pokemon is doing a pattern like, like a release, kind of like a release window pattern is what you're saying. Um, like a cycle of, you know, new generation remake, new generation remake, like that type of thing. Um, and you're definitely right. They've been doing that for, you know, pretty much their entire existence at this point. Um, and I know they kind of want to continue shaking things up. Uh, starting with Gen 4, Gen 2 remakes, Gen 6 remade, Gen 3. Oh, yes, I got you. Um, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're... Oh, okay, I get you now. So you're saying that the black and white uh, remakes won't come until Gen 10. Okay, yeah, that makes total sense. That makes total sense. So right now it would make sense for them to do a new Johto thing. Like a Legends or a... Let's go, Johto. Oh, Fury Swipes. This is kind of famously a not very good move. Um, oh yeah, we're not gonna learn Fury Swipes. Um, yes, Gen 8 remade uh, Gen 4. I, I am not a huge fan of what they did with the Gen 4 remakes. I know a lot of people aren't. Um, ooh, Beedrill. I did not know this guy had a Beedrill. Um, let's see what our boy Mankey can do. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think that was kind of an experiment for Pokemon with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and I think they kind of now know that people, people weren't really into that. Um, at least, at least for the most part. I mean, it sold super well, they all do. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what they do next. Um, they kind of get a lot of flack for never changing the formula, but there has been a pretty concerted effort on their part to do that, at least recently. Okay, nice. Love a miss. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I know that they have, uh... Pokemon Day coming up here on, I think, the 27th. But we'll see. <laughs> Gen 8 BDSB is bad. Yeah, I, I kind of tend to agree. I, I usually enjoy all Pokemon games. I think they're all fun, uh, whether they're my favorite or not. Um, but I would definitely agree that that was not one of their... Not one of their better ones, one of their better choices. Um, to kind of, Just to do those games in that way, I didn't think were was super smart. Um, I specifically th thought it was really dumb to not really include Platinum stuff. Because I think Platinum, you could argue Platinum's the best Pokemon game ever made. Or at least I think you can. Um, but, uh, they didn't really include much Platinum stuff in those games, which I found interesting. We're gonna use Vittlebug just for fun. Um, uh, Gen 6, X, and Y are worse. I don't totally disagree. I am not a huge fan of X and Y. Um, I really like a lot of the designs that they have. Uh, we'll just keep Vittlebug in. This is um, oh, Venonat is a Pokemon we'll encounter a lot more later. Um, oh, crap. Okay, good. They didn't disable Dig. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think those games are just very easy. Um, I, I know they had, like, a Pokemon Z planned, and it kind of got abandoned. Um, 
which I think was unfortunate because I thought that could have been really cool. Um, and they've really stopped doing the, the third version altogether. Um, like, for those of you that don't know, in the first four generations, it was always like they would release the kind of dual sister games, and then there would be a third version. Um, and yellow is the third version of the first generation. Um, and then it was crystal in the second, emerald in the third, and platinum in the fourth. And those are all my favorite Pokemon games. Um, but they really stopped doing that after Generation 4. I wouldn't hate if they kind of brought that idea back. Um, like, even if they did a Z version now. That would be fun. I, I There's a lot of fun possibilities. Because there's like 30 years of, you know, fun lore and things to build off of. Oh, you heard Sun and Moon aren't bad. Let me get on my soapbox on Sun and Moon, actually. Because a lot of people dislike Sun and Moon. Um, because there's like a long tutorial section at the beginning. Um, and just kind of like a lot of cutscenes in general. But I am a hard Sun and Moon apologist because I think the story is really, really good. One of the better ones that they've ever had. Um, they kind of abandon the gym system for, like, island trials, which is really cool and really, like, creative. Um, and something that they got a lot of flack for was not being creative. And then they did something creative and people were like, I hate these games. Um, I think Sun and Moon are great. The, the original specifically, because Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, the story doesn't make as much sense to me. Um... Tutorials be tutorials. That's what I'm saying. You know, new players got to learn how to play. I don't mind playing tutorials. Um, that's just how it is. Um, let's see here. Yes, we got our new and improved wife. Um, my wife in real life can't be improved. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this. Um, no, she's actually at work this morning. So, I'm doing this, of course, while she is toiling away. Um, okay, we have 10 super potions to get through Rock Tunnel. That should be enough. There is a Pokemon Center coming up here. I'm going to save real quick. Um, but yeah, Sun and Moon. Love Sun and Moon. Highly recommend those. They are among my favorites of the, like, modern games. Um, I also thought Scarlet and Violet were really great as well. Super fun. Um, a lot has been made of their performance issues, which are, you know, not nothing, but... Um, I still love them. Oh, some tutorials are bad? Yeah, I've actually never played Mario & Luigi Dream Team. Um... I mean, I can believe that. And, you know, because a lot of the players of Pokemon are, uh, you know, people like me who have just been playing these games for their entire lives, and they know the drill, so to speak. Um, so, I get, I get that a lot of people get frustrated with it. But for me, it's also just like, you know, it's a fun video game. There aren't too many things to be frustrated with in a fun video game. But yeah, I've never played Mario & Luigi Dream Team, so I can't speak on that. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, I don't... I mean, I do know why Saturday mornings always felt like the greatest time to be playing video games. Just the vibes are incredible. You just ended the school week or the work week now as an adult person. Um, and you, you feel you feel so free. You, you never feel so, this free. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Um, Oh, they have a tutorial in the last area of the game. 
That seems to not make sense. Like, do they just introduce like a wild new mechanic right at the very end? Because that also seems like an odd, an odd choice. I actually have not played many Mario games um, at all. Uh, I was actually posting on Instagram this morning. Um, I'm interested in playing Super Mario RPG because I enjoy RPGs um, generally, and I hadn't really, I hadn't really found your Mario fan. Awesome. Um, I hadn't really found a Mario game that I was like super into. Um, and I kind of had heard that Super Mario RPG was kind of like a cult classic type of game. Um, like it wasn't really appreciated in its time, but it actually has aged kind of well. That's kind of what I heard. I don't know if that's true. Uh, but I do have it and I might, I might, uh, pick it up soon. I kind of have a handful of games that I've never played that I, uh, really want to dig into. Um, oh yeah, what was that item we picked up? We have TM30 here. This is... Oh, Teleport. Um, teleport just helps you teleport to the last Pokemon Center that you used, no matter where you are. Um, but we're going to fight this lady. We'll probably uh, deposit that TM so we have some room to get through Rock Tunnel. Um, but yeah, I, I have Mario Odyssey. I kind of started playing that. Maybe I can start that over and, get, and uh, play that a little bit again. Because I did like it. Um what I played of it. I just don't know what it is about Mario games that just haven't really, uh, haven't really captured me. Um, and I, I thought, like, the originals were, were cool, um, when I played them when I was young. Um, like Super Mario Brothers 3, I played a little bit when I was young. Um, Super Mario World, I know that that is a huge one. Um, and I pro that's probably a game I would like to dig into. Because um, I'd like to go back and play some more classic games. Um, I kind of have a running list. Like, I'd like to play, like, you know, the original Metroid. Because um, I know that started that, like, Metroidvania type because like a game like like metroid or like castlevania there's like a specific kind of platformer um that's what it's kind of been known as shorthand that kind of platformer and um and platformer if you don't know just means the gameplay kind of revolves around jumping on platforms essentially um that's kind of like the bulk of what the gameplay is um i just finished um, Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps, uh, which are kind of like that Metroidvania platformer type of game. Um, and I loved those. I thought they were so gorgeous, um, so cool. Uh, the music was incredible. The story was really kind of like sparse in a great way. Um, it really just kind of let you go, um, let you fly, and... Um, you got to fill in the blanks as you went. And again, impeccable vibes. Uh, again, that's what I love about a game. Where did my water go? Oh, it fell over. Um, so, here we have Rock Tunnel. This is um, a famous dungeon in this game because when you enter... I think I saved the game. I'm going to save again because I have anxiety. Um, it is pitch black. Not pitch black. In the Generation 2 games, you truly cannot see anything when you come in here, when you come into dark places. Uh, but in Gen 1, they at least give you like the vague outline of the walls. But luckily, we have taught our uh, Butterfree Flash. So, ta-da! You can see you now. Um... All right, I don't, we don't have too many repels. Yeah, we have eight. So I don't want to, I want to use them a little bit sparingly, especially because I don't really know what the levels in this area are. Um, but I don't really want to fight everybody. Ah, Cubone. Uh, Cubone may or may not be a Pokemon that we add to the squad. Um, 
Uh, Cubone actually kind of has some increased significance in this game um, as compared to other games in the franchise. Uh, that, is, that is really cool, like cool bits of lore. Um, so I kind of want to explore using a Cubone on the squad uh, for this run through. But we'll get there when we get there. Now we have Slowpoke. I believe we've seen a Slowpoke before. Um, we'll go back to Birdie. I like Cubone and Let's Go. Oh, absolutely. Um, and one of the cool things about the Let's Go games that that I found really fun as a, you know, a Gen 1-er, as they say, someone who's kind of been with the franchise since the beginning, was when you play Let's Go, there are a lot of Pokemon that have, like, gained evolutions in later generations. Um, or, like kind of have become obsolete, so to speak, as the, as like the power creep um, has made all of the characters stronger. But in Let's Go, it kind of lets you return to some of those Pokemon to um, use them again in a different, in a, in a different context, really. Um, Oh yeah, <laughs> Let's Go does have dark types. Um, and like I use Rhydon in my first playthrough because in those Let's Go games, Rhydon doesn't evolve like it does in the newer games. Um, and I thought that was really cool because in newer games, you're probably not likely to use a Pokemon like that um, because it's kind of been phased out, so to speak. So that was really fun returning to that. Um, uh, we're gonna pop back over here um, and we're gonna cut so we can save the steps in our rappel um, sorry about the music um, but yeah cubone has a lot of good story significance. Yeah, I kind of know where we are a little bit in this first area. Alright. Now, Rock Tunnel is something that I've never been good about memorizing. Um, even though I've played this game just so many times. Um, so we'll see. we'll see how I do. Uh, we should be able to get through Rock Tunnel this stream. That'll kind of be our goal. Ugh, Slowpoke. The thing about Slowpoke is that they are just very bulky. They just have a lot of hit points. Yeah, like that didn't do a lot of damage. And it's psychic. Don't kill me. Okay. Uh, Gen 3 version of Gen has no dark type Pokemon, only dark type moves. Are you saying uh, Gen 3 version of Gen 1? Yes. Um, yeah, you're pretty much right, because there's none of those Gen 1 Pokemon get uh, like the dark type after the fact. Like, for example, Magnemite and Magneton, they get the Steel type later. Um, and just when you're playing through those games, there's just no opportunity to get them. Um, I suppose you could get Umbreon, in theory. But maybe not, because I don't think they have the day-night cycle. I don't really know how they do that in that game. Um, but uh, is there anything? I don't think there's anything back there. Oh yes, my repels are out. Um... Yeah, Dark, Dark is one of my favorite types. Honestly, both of my favorite types are the ones that they introduced in Generation 2. Dark and Steel are probably my favorite types. Um, I'm like saving before every trainer. We don't really need to, but I just like to be safe. I have a lot of friends that really... Uh, <clears throat> know me by my safety. <laughs> um, 
I'm a very big uh, proponent of wearing our seatbelt and being safe and being cautious. Which is, you know, honestly probably one of the reasons I'm here with you today. Um, because like I was saying, last night we had just such a terrible time driving home. And we had to be like crazy careful. Um, like, yeah, like we were doing an over an hour drive. Like literally at 20, 30 mile an hour the entire time. Um, which was certainly frustrating, but, you know, we're trying to live. I like being alive. It's pretty great. Uh, oh, meaning Psychic was still overpowered in Gen 3's Gen 1. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I mean, they still don't, they still didn't have many bug type moves then, because, um, specifically in this game, the bug type is super effective against um, psychic types, but there are like no uh, bug attacking moves in this generation. Um, so it couldn't really do that. So psychic is, you know, I've described earlier in these streams like a, like a boss type in this game, really. Um, and Bulbasaur was just doing its powder all over the place. I hope we have, I feel like, no, Pin Missile is Gen 1, just no one learns it. Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure Jolteon might be the only Pokemon that learns it. And that's a Pokemon we'll see later in this run. Um, okay, I have two Antidotes and two Awakenings, so nobody gets uh, put to sleep or poison anytime soon. Um, this guy might also have Slowbro. Can we skip him or not? Yes, we can actually like that. Yeah, we might skip a few of these trainers. Uh-oh, not you, though. Um, uh, yes, luckily Mankey can still be here using low kick on the rock types. That's what get, got us past Brock. Oh, no. I hate self-destruct. Yeah, that's terrible. That's terrible, and that's all he did. That's all he had. Just being a b-hole over here. Um, I'm gonna fight you, because I'm going to go back to the center just one more time, and then I'll really try to power through the rest of Rock Tunnel. Because I want to kind of Conserve. Be uh, you might be right. Be drill. drill might be able to learn it too. But yes, still, it's not. It's super not something that happens in this game. Um. Yes, Onyx. We'll go out to my wife. Um, I know Gyarados and Weeping Bell are going to be mainstays on the squad throughout our run. Um. Oh no. Um. Okay. Good. That's something I talked about earlier, is that in this game, if they use bind or wrap or something that kind of traps you like that, if you're slower, you can, in theory, be trapped the entire time. Um, all right. I don't have any revives, so I'm going to go... Oh, crap. <laughs> I was so excited about skipping this guy. Uh, but that's okay. Um, well, uh, Gyarados can destroy a Charmander real quick. Cubone, once again. Um, yes. Uh, Weeping Bell and Gyarados are going to be the star here in Rock Tunnel because a lot of these trainers have ground and rock types. Um, yeah, Beedrill is also a poison type. Yeah, and there are tons of poison types in Generation 1. Um... Stun Spore? I still don't think we need Stun Spore. Oh yeah, because Bellsprout tried to learn it. No, I like this. I like this move set. Um, uh, yeah, Psychic was just Psychic was boss, man. Psychic was the type, um, and that's why a lot of the early um, legendary Pokemon are the psychic type because the developers were like, yeah, we know it's too good. It's too strong. Um, so if you're going to be legendary, you're going to be psychic. At least more often than not. Early on. <laughs> Alright. 
right, let's do this. We're gonna try to not die this time. Um, yes, because I want to use Hanky Panky. Um, at least, at least for now, we'll see. Um, I was kind of looking through our options, and there might be some uh, really good. There might be a good replacement for Manky. Um and we may completely and fully abandon our idea for the Ash Reject team. I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to do. Because I reserve the right to change my mind. This is just a fun playthrough, folks. We're, we're just having a great time. Um, oh, Gen, Gen 2 really nerfed the sidekick type. You are absolutely right. Um, which I, like, they nerfed it. Nerfed means to, like, make worse, basically. Um... They nerfed it to... What am I doing? Uh, really more just balance the game. Um, because when they came out with the dark type, they made psychic moves completely ineffective on the dark type. Um, and, and the dark type was super effective against psychic. So instead of making it like game like a game breaking type, it just made it a really good type. Um which is great. You don't want things to be too powerful. Um let's see, we'll go to Caterpoo. Oh <laughs> yes. Um that's another good point, uh, Jesse. Um Ghost types are now super effective against psychics. That's kind of how they were always supposed to be. But in this game, there is only one line that is ghost type. And one, they're also poison type, which means Psychic is super effective against them. And two, they don't really have any ghost type moves um, to use against them. Um, because we... Earlier in one of our streams, we encountered the move... So oh, crap. That was a, a mistake. We encountered the move Sonic Boom, which does 20 hit points no matter what. Uh, the Ghost type also has a move like that, or similar to that, called Nightshade, where it's cool, it's like a specific Ghost type move, but it only does the amount of hit points as the Pokemon's level using it. So, like, if this Geodude could use Nightshade, it would do 19 damage. Um, so, even though Ghost-type was super effective against Psychics, it's, like, really only attacking move um, effectively wasn't, so to speak. Um, yeah, we're really getting in the nitty-gritty here, folks. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're really gonna ride Gyarados through here today. Um, especially because all of these rock types can explode and I really just don't want anybody to die today. It's just not my goal. Um, and as, ooh, a Graveler, this is Geodude's evolved form for the uninitiated. Haha, -ha, an even bigger rock guy. Um, but, uh, and these are rock and ground type, which means that they are double weak to, gra to water and grass. That's why Bubble Beam from Gyarados is pretty much a guaranteed one hit KO on them. Um, all right, let's see here. I don't think that's anything. Okay, we're gonna keep using our repels. Oh, I think, yeah, that's dead end. Oopsie daisy. Ghost type moves to psychic type in gen one, psychics are immune to them. Um, oh really, they're immune to them completely? Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know that. Um, that's just, you know, another one of the broken things about gen one. Um, these games are famously put together with tape. 
tape and a prayer. But, you know, like, with all of its flaws, still, like, the really, really awesome conceit and, you know, philosophy was able to shine through and spawn the phenomenon we have today. Um, let's see. Ah, Meowth, yes, good. Again, oh boy. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. Just critical hits everywhere. Okay, great. Love to see a one-shot there. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Uh, Payday is a signature move of Meowth because it has that little coin in its forehead. Um, and any time it's used in a battle after the battle, there will just be kind of like what amounts to change on the on the ground after it's used. Um, we'll go into wife here. Um, for the hiker. Uh, which is just a funny little fun mechanic. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, so Psychics in Gen 1 only had one weakness, and it was Bug, which we talked about. There's, like, no Pokemon that have that, uh, have attacking moves of that type. Um, so it was just completely insane. Um, we're actually going to encounter a Psychic-type gym leader later in the game, and they are notoriously tough, especially in the anime, um when Ash encounters uh, Sabrina is her name. When Ash encounters Sabrina, it's like like a hopeless, <laughs> like a hopeless uphill battle to uh, defeat Sabrina because she just seems so overpowered and strong. Um, oh, what up, dude? I'm gonna skip you for sure. I don't want to deal with you. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, let's go fix a lot of problems. Um, it put a lot of those um, quality of life things back into Generation 1. Yeah, because even like you said, when they did the Generation 3 remakes, um, there were still things that weren't quite fixed, like the psychic dark issue. Oh, and in this game, every time Rap hits, you're also hurt by poison. That is, like, a great strategy by her. Okay. Um, there we go. Yeah, Gen 3 was terrible still, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, fu it's fun to talk about that about these just uh, flaws with these games over the years. Um, but it's so funny, I still find myself just loving them. Just like, not <laughs> not really caring. Um, uh, let's use one more repel. That should, this is the last room um, I remember of Rock Tunnel. We'll skip that one trainer. Oh uh, yes. All right, one more battle. Let's do it, team. Um, yeah, I'm not overly picky when it comes to video games. If I like the, if I like the story, if I like the vibe, um, I'm pretty much in. Um, because I actually have a uh, a theater background. Um, that's what I studied in school. Um, and I was a professional actor for several years. Um, so I'm really, I'm really attracted to story in video games, and that's kind of one of the, um, one of the main things I look for. It's kind of always one of the main things I've looked for. That's why I enjoy, um, kind of like story-based RPGs, kind of like this, um, I also really love Kingdom Hearts. Um, if you look at the the profile picture on Twitch there, um, and 
that is actually me getting a PlayStation 2 for Christmas when I was young. And on that day, I also got Kingdom Hearts. And I love that game. It's a game I want to stream on the channel. Um, that kind of was the real true birth of my love of like a story-based game. Um, I don't remember what they're sending out. Okay, Pidgey, yeah, we good. Um, Paper Mario Sticker Star, nobody likes that. <laughs> I've never played it. <laughs> I know, I, I think I have heard that the Paper Mario games can be very, like, hit and miss. Um, I know Thousand Year Door is one that I hear about a lot that is good. Um, but I know for every one like that, there are games in that franchise that are not popular. Um, okay, there's a couple trainers out here that we might return to. Um, there we go, our last repel. But I'm not going to fight him right now. Because, or maybe I will, but first, listen to this. Yeah, very spooky music. This is Lavender Town, home of the Pokemon Tower here. Uh, may the souls of Pokemon rest easy. Pokemon Tower, it's like a Pokemon graveyard. Um, and that is where we will encounter maybe our next team member, which I'm excited about. Um, oh, Thousand Year Door is getting a remake this year. That's fun. Um, that kind of... <laughs> kind of really tells you that it was a popular game if it's getting a remake um any game getting like a remake or a remaster is like classic i don't want to say cash grab that's a little bit that's a little bit um cynical because i like i've enjoyed the remakes i've played of the pokemon games and things like that over the years i was saying last stream um revives are a great item because they can revive a pokemon that has fainted um, oh, let me get, like, six of these. Um, do -do -do, do -do -do -do. um, because I've, I've enjoyed the remakes that I've played over the years of this franchise. Oh, yes, and I was just saying last stream that, uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, um, was, like, it's probably one of my favorite games ever. I freaking love Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, and that also, like, did a little bit of a meta, like, what is a remake type of thing. Um, um, well, I'm gonna fight this one guy. I might, I might come back to these trainers a little bit later if we need a few more levels. Um, but... Uh, what's Keith Angel? 23. Great. Um, because I know we're going to be adding some new members to the squad, and they might need to be leveled up a little bit. But we'll see. Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong got a remake yesterday. Um, yeah, I heard about that. I never played that. Was that a Game Boy Advance game, I think? Um, or something like that? Uh, Slowpoke. What do we want for that? Let's do Birdie. Um. And yeah, I was just talking earlier about Super Mario RPG. Um, and how I have the remake of that sitting on my, uh, sitting in my drawer over there ready to be played. Um, okay, yeah, it was GBA. Uh, Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I never played it. Um. I, I had just seen some advertisements about it. It looked kind of cool. Um, but uh, have you played that one? Mario Donkey Kong? Mario vs. Donkey Kong? So, this is Pokemon Tower. Let me show you Pokemon Tower. Excellent music. The music is so good. So she's a channeler. There are spirits up to mischief. 
So here you can fight your rival. You see him right up there at the top of the screen. We are not going to do that right now um, because, or maybe we are. You know what? We are, we're doing it. Um, that'll be one of the last things we do this stream. Um, here in Pokemon Tower, you can't go up to the next level because there are ghost Pokemon that you can't see. Um, and the game is going to route you to our next city over so we can get the item to see the ghost type Pokemon. Um, so for the last thing in our stream here, we're gonna fight our rival. We're not even fully healed. Don't even care. Oh, you've played about half of it. How is it? Um, yeah, this is kind of notoriously one of the easier rival fights. Oh yeah, I forgot the Esfira. But even so, we might be not be doing great. We'll see how we do. Um, oh, lucky five shot. Hopefully we can lower that speed. Yeah, let's do it. Nice. Okay, Bubble Beam, that's not gonna... It's a good puzzle platformer. Good to know. Um, oh, my speed fell now. Ah, crap. Um, good to know on Mario Donkey Kong. So any Mario fans out there, maybe check that out. Um, I know Mario was initially like a foil to Donkey Kong um, because Mario, the character actually debuted in the Donkey Kong arcade game as like the hero of that game and like, you know, it's very simple arcade, like just jump up the platform game. Um, and Mario actually wasn't called Mario, he was called Jumpman. Um, and um, yeah, that was kind of Mario's first appearance before he became, you know, the absolute just uh, mainstay that he is now, which is really cool. We use Biddlebug on this here Volpix. I love Volpix, so cute. Uh, oh, getting game overs aren't that bad in Mario Donkey Kong. That is great because there is nothing more frustrating than when you die in a game and then it just takes you forever to like reload the game or to like get back where you were. That is crazy frustrating and I hate it very much. Um, yeah, we have, we have a pretty good squad to deal with our rival at this point. Um, yeah, they don't make his levels very high here. I think they kind of expect you to fight him when you get out of Rock Tunnel. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Sand Attack, my favorite. Sandshrew has a great sprite in this game, I think. Um, oh, yeah, Mario was a villain in Donkey Kong Jr., yeah. Um, yeah, Mario was not always the the main character of the hero. Yeah, because at this point his Eevee, his Eevee is set to evolve here pretty soon, but at this point it's not the strongest anymore. Like in the early game it was pretty good. That's a terrible miss. Um, I say, oh, his Eevee's not that strong and he's just killing me right now. Um, nah. well, we'll go into Birdie so we can kill with a uh, quick tech. Um, there we go. That should do it. Nice! Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> my ROM is doing this weird thing where the characters will talk to me when they're not facing me. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, just caught a Q-bone! That's something that we want to catch. Um, can't find the grown-up Marowak yet. I doubt there are any left, which is a very interesting statement. Because Cubone is a Pokemon that, according to its Pokedex, wears the skull of its dead mother. And Marowak is like the dead mother. And that's something that will come into play here. So when we go up here, this channeler is going to tell us we could not identify the wayward ghosts. A Sylph Scope might be able to unmask them. That's the item we're looking for. Um, so here, when you run into a ghost type, you can't identify them. So you can't fight them. You can't fight them or catch them, and it's, like, really weird and freaky. Um, but we'll come back 
with the Sylph Scope. Um, so that's about where we're going to end the stream off uh, today. Oh, Mario actually dies in the NES version. I don't doubt it. Um, so that is where we will end off. We'll end off here in Lavender Town. Um, on our next stream, we'll go ahead and head over to... Um, oh, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, that's still it's too small. I can't read it. <laughs> I need to increase the text on that so I can actually read. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, uh, but next stream, we'll head over to the next city over and we will figure out how to find our Sylph Scope so we can come back to the Lavender Town Tower, um, which will be super fun. Um, thank you for joining me today so much. It's been great talking. Um, and again, if you don't catch this live, I upload all of these streams to um, my YouTube, which is just still also called a Silver Cave Gaming. And uh, you can catch it there at your leisure. Um, well, great. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. Enjoy your snowy Saturday if you live around where I do. And I will see you all next time. Peace out, gang. <laughs>